The world looks at us and say, hey, I can pop my collar to them. You can't pop your collar to somebody who fled, dude. That's where the jealousy is coming from. You can't pop your collar to somebody who fled. You can always pop your collar to somebody who stood up and fought for what was right. That's what we- Let's ask Google, why was the Haitian Revolution important to American history? The Haitian Revolution, which took place between 1791-1804, is significant because Haiti is the only country where slave freedom was taken by force. It was the only successful slave revolt in modern times. Dumb. I guess Haitian is an inspiration, an example to all Africans on how to liberate yourself from oppression from the most powerful empire known to man at that time. That's pretty important. That's jealous tether talk. And now we're not going to sit up and shut up. We're going to produce some damn justice. Y'all sat down and shut up and now look at your home country. Why aren't these guys running? Have them go. go. When the colonizers came, you sat down and shut up. Rebellions. The most well-documented resistance in Africa was off the African coast on the slaving ships. There were around 500 documented rebellions and slave ships, as well as numerous smaller acts of resistance during the transatlantic slave trade period. As the historian David Richardson's research shows, the threat of rebellion seriously affected the trade. It caused losses and raised costs because of increased security needs and because potential investors in the transatlantic slave trade got nervous when they heard of the rebellions. This resistance usually ended in the enslaved Africans failing to secure their immediate freedom. However, it has been shown to have significantly reduced the shipment of slaves to the Americas by a million people. Very little information is available on individual Africans involved in such heroic resistance. One we do know of is the Assant, Esgerietin. He led a bold revolt of 358 enslaved Africans aboard the Dutch ship Guinea's Friendship in 1769 that nearly succeeded. Unfortunately, a nearby warship rescued the slavers. They captured Etin and he was brutally executed on the recaptured ship in front of the other enslaved Africans. Now you ain't got nothing in your own homeland where you outnumber all of the damn non-white people. You sat down and shut up and didn't do nothing and let them fleece your damn homeland to the point where you got to leave. No, we ain't going to sit down and shut up. Somebody's going to have to stand up and speak up. That is us. I was told to come back and tell you that African Americans and or black people that live in America do not in any way believe in or support the actions, rhetoric and sentiments of the xenophobic hate group created to divide the African diaspora FBA lead by their leader named who knows, really, African Americans are loving caring people who love and appreciate Caribbeans and Africans and know is without a shadow of a doubt that they are in fact Africans. Don't get mad at us because you ain't got that in your damn spirit, bruh. You got on your track shoes. Don't get mad at us because we stand up. We call the bullshit out. That's a part of our culture. I don't want to interview him. Interview a whining tether for what? He just wants some clout and attention and just want to whine. They love whining about us. They love whining about us. Tether, stay whining about us, ladies and gentlemen. But no, we're not going to sit down and shut up. That's not what we do. Because if we sat down and shut up, nobody would have nothing. 
Somebody has to stand up. You got to understand, we are the, y'all talk, the, you know, the, the white supremacists talk about the thin blue line. We are the thin FBA line. We are the thin black line. I want y'all to understand this. Foundational black Americans, we are the thin black line. We are the line between justice and complete chaos and subjugation, complete subjugation of black people. We're the only ones who are stopping complete, total subjugation of black people globally. You understand? We're the only people who's stopping that. Let me say it again. We're the only people who's stopping that. If we go, black people globally are done. Do you understand? We are the thin black line. If foundational black Americans fall, if they completely subjugate us psychologically to the point where we ain't fighting back no more, the black race globally is done. We're the thin black line. See, the white supremacists, they, they, they call the police the thin blue line. They say, well, the police, they're the, the, the thin blue line between order and complete chaos. If the police are um, taken down, the everyday police, they say it's going to be complete chaos, meaning the blacks are going to take over. That's basically what they mean. But as foundational black Americans, if we are subjugated to the point where we just sit down and shut up, and we don't fight no more, the black race globally is done. Because we're the only ones who are really consistently, and the key word is consistently, we have consistently challenge the white supremacist status quo. You understand? We're the only ones to do that consistently. I'm not talking about a one hit wonder here or there. You had a revolution, might have had a revolution in Jamaica. You had one in Haiti a couple of hundred years ago and then no more. No, 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 no. We've been very consistent with ours. We're the thin black line. That's why they always have to watch what we're doing. There's always an attack on us. In particular, foundational of black Americans, there's always an attack on us. Because they've already subjugated some of these people in these other lands. Especially when you have the majority, they're the majority, and you got like Asians and whites and other groups coming in there and just subjugating them. Like one or two people coming in there subjugating the whole country. You're psychologically subjugated if that can happen. You dig? You're psychologically subjugated and still holding on to tribal, um, impractical tribal nonsense. Yeah. And the fact that we stand up and we don't settle for what they settle for, they feel a certain way. You know, they can't break us. They've been trying to break us for 500 years. We have not been broken psychologically. They're like, damn, how do these niggas just keep on standing up? You think? Know? We are the thin black line, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we got 6,000 people in here. We're in here heavy. Shout out to everybody in here. Don't forget, family. Listen, everybody in here, we got 6,000 people in here. Family, it would be nice. It would be great. If everybody go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Everybody contribute to the Hidden History Museum every month. Set up an automatic contribution every month to the Hidden History Museum because we have so many great things in the museum. And this is 100% grassroots so that we can keep maintaining. Every little thing helps because we have so many ops attacking the museum. So we have to make maintain our daily operations. So we want everybody to just put a little something every month on the museum. Every little thing can help. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. The grand opening is next week or this coming weekend. The new movie American Maroon is coming out on FBAStream.com. FBAStream.com, the new movie American Maroon. Great information in that movie, ladies and gentlemen. You do not want to miss this movie. American Maroon is a phenomenal film. Go to American-Maroon.com. Look below. You can go see the trailer, American-Maroon.com. It's going to be available next week. Phenomenal movie. 
I can't wait to see everybody at the museum this coming weekend. For those who got the tickets for the private showing and the VIP grand opening, it's going to be a phenomenal event. And the public grand opening will be that Monday where um, the 27th, everybody can come to the museum on the 27th. It's going to be open to the public. Um, can't wait for you guys to check the museum out. You're going to love it. Phenomenal place. Um, it's going to be popping. Rosewater, that's not a real argument. That's whining. And yet we are going to have hard copies of the film too because a lot of people were asking for the DVD. Hey man, is there going to be a DVD? So we are going to have DVDs too. So y'all stay tuned for that. We will have DVDs for the movie American Maroon. So do not worry about that. It's going. We got it on Blu-ray. We're actually going to have them on Blu-ray. So do not worry about that. We're going to have that. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Mickey. Anyway, y'all, I think we had a great constructive conversation tonight. I think we had a great conversation. And good. The movie American Maroon is three hours long. So we talk a lot about about talk a lot about Aboriginal Black history. We get real deep in this movie. It's a real deep movie, man. So it's a good family movie. Um, I'm, Buck breaking, it wasn't too family friendly, but this one is. You can show this one in churches. I don't think we use any profanity in it. There's some violence in it, but it's a good family film that the family can learn from. A lot of good history, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, man, don't forget the, the FBA Expo happening in Dallas on May 27th. Y'all go to FBAExpo.com. Um, all the businesses that we're going to be promoting out there, FBAExpo.com. Get your tickets for that. Get your vending um, space for that. That's going to be phenomenal. Uh, let me get up out of here. Y'all, we had a great conversation tonight.